Hello everyone, I'm finally back after all those months with a new video. This will be the first part of a mini-series where I take a comprehensive look at the two main Minecraft skin editors and compare the different strengths and limitations of each one. First up, we have the skin dex editor. It's a fairly simple looking editor, there's nothing too complicated in the background, nothing really there to distract you. You have all the tools you need over on the left here, uh, for making the skin that is, and then down here in this corner you have options to do with the skin once you're finished making it so you can like save it to your device or you can upload it directly to skin decks or you can import a skin file that you previously worked on which is definitely gonna come in handy uh, above that we have uh, the options to switch between the two different player models so obviously we're gonna click the three pixel arm model the Alex model because let's face it it is the better model like 99% of the time then above that you have various options to show or hide different limbs or just like different body parts. So I can click on the torso and it becomes invisible. If I click it again, it shows up again. Uh, above that then you can toggle on and off the different layers. So there are two layers on a typical Minecraft skin. There's the main body layer and then above that there's the outer layer. Uh, this was kind of intended as an armor layer but Nowadays people don't really use it for that, they use it more just for detailing. Uh, above that you have uh, like your color selector. And yeah, those are basically just like the main features at a very basic level. We'll just go through all these different tiles one by one now. So let's start off with this uh, pencil or pen looking tool. And well, this is just a really simple drawing tool. So. You just hold down with your mouse button or you press down on the screen if you're using a phone or a tablet and move around and it will follow wherever you go. That's simple, that can just like draw pixel by pixel. One thing I will say about uh, the Skindex editor is the draw tool does have a delay. So as you see me move there, there is a little bit of spacing between these pixels since I move my mouse fast. And if I move my mouse really fast, like that, you can see the pixels are spaced even further apart. Let's try that again just to see if I can get them really far apart. Okay, there we go. Uh, I moved my mouse very fast there and as you can see there's like four or five pixels between each uh, pixel that actually got painted. So you won't be able to move super fast with the drawing tool on the Skindex editor, but I mean that doesn't really matter that much most of the time anyway. Obviously sometimes you might slip a little bit and you will paint something you didn't want to paint in which case we have this second tool right here which is you know just a simple erase tool and wherever you click and hold your mouse down on or hold your finger down on the screen if you're using a mobile device uh, and you just move around and you can erase anything you've drawn. So uh, we'll just erase everything here. This will take a little bit of time, not too long. Okay, so we've erased everything. Let's move on to the third tool, which is this sort of paintbrush looking tool right here. And this is like a camo or noise mode tool. Now, I don't really recommend you use this. There are cases where it can work, uh, but even like if you're doing camo, like if you're doing a military skin for whatever reason, you should probably just make the camo pattern yourself. You will probably make it look much better, even if you have very little experience. Now I will say there is one thing that the paintbrush tool can be useful for, and that's basically uh, when you're shading and you want to see what color values you should use for that shading. So if I want a lighter blue, I'll just color pick that and it'll give a hex value. And then uh, I can pick a darker one and it'll give you the value for that. But what I will say is even in relation to this, you probably shouldn't use those exact values because you will want to change them a little bit, uh, hue shift them, maybe saturation shift them to make them more interesting, brighter, uh, just look better, I guess. You know, a little less plain and in a lot of cases, uh, a bit more natural as well. Uh, so yeah, this can be a good guide for getting uh, the colors you want to use for your shading, but you still need to make your own adjustments to them later on. 
And you may have noticed that while I was explaining that third tool, the paintbrush tool right here, I was also using this fourth tool down the list, which is the color picker tool. And this is a fairly simple tool to understand. You just click any pixel on the skin and it will give you the color that that pixel is. And it will also automatically set you to draw mode so you can just draw in whatever color you picked. So let's do that again with a lighter color. Let's try this one right here. And as you see, yeah, it automatically sets it to draw mode. So yeah, very simple and useful tool. It is very good for keeping your colors consistent. And now we move on to our fifth tool down the list, which is the paint bucket tool. And how this works on the Skindex editor is that you just select any surface on any layer and it will paint the entirety of that surface whatever color you're currently using. So let's do it on the top of the head on the outer layer there. As you can see, painted the entire outer layer that color. If we do it on the uh, body layer, on say the arm, does the exact same thing. Uh, if we do it on this part here, uh, where there's already a bunch of existing information, it will also cover that. So uh, you do need to keep that in mind that the Paint Bucket Tool on Skin Decks will always color the entire surface that you click on. So uh, it doesn't matter what you've drawn before, it will always paint over that. So that's just something you want to keep in mind. Moving on, we have these two tools down here, which are, as you might expect just by looking at them, undo and redo. And how these work on the Skin Decks editor is if I click undo here, a uh, paint bucket tool will undo the entire surface that you did. So you can undo like that. And uh, then, apart from that, when you use the other brushes, so whether you use the draw tool or the paintbrush tool, oh, these actually have names. There's auto tone and pencil tool. If you use the pencil tool or the auto tone, then using the undo tool will undo whatever you've done pixel by pixel. Most of the time it's probably just going to be faster to erase it or paint over it. Uh, the undo tool, as you can see there, it does preserve whatever was on there before, so uh, let's just do another demonstration of that. Uh, as you can see here, I have red and green painted right here, and I'm painting blue down in this corner. Oh no, my blue overran onto the red and green. Well, we could just use the undo tool and anything that was red and green before will go back to being red and green. So the undo tool can be useful in that sense because it will preserve whatever you had before you made your mistake. Similarly, we also have the redo tool, which, you know, it's just the opposite of undo. It redoes anything you undo. So you have a bunch of undoing here. Let's use the redo tool. As you can see, it just redoes everything we've done. Next up, we have this row down here, which are the color modifying tools. So the plus will darken your color and the minus will lighten it. Now, uh, just like the autotone tool, the paintbrush, I don't really recommend you use this entirely for selecting your colors. Like, you can use it uh, to start off with, but again, you will want to hue shift and saturation shift your colors and probably just increase the contrast to make your skins look more interesting and look more colorful and, for a lack of a better word, look more aesthetic. But if you do want to use these tools, then uh, just remember that plus will darken and that minus will lighten. Next up, we have this small row down here. This is to zoom in and out uh, of your view. So uh, I press plus and it just zooms in. Press minus and it zooms out. Uh, one thing that should be mentioned about the Skindex editor is that I can't zoom in or out by scrolling with the scroll wheel on a computer. And similarly, on a mobile device, you can't zoom in and out by pinching. Uh, you have to use these tools in the corner here uh, to zoom in and out. And finally, on this left column, we have the mirror tool, which uh, basically how this tool works is whatever you paint on one limb, it will paint on the opposite limb. So let's start off, I'm just going to do this little marking on the leg, and as you can see there, 
it painted that on the opposite leg. Let's try, say, the body layer on the arm. And as you can see, it also painted that on the opposite arm. So uh, the mirror tool can be very useful tool. It can definitely save you a lot of time when uh, designing your skin and uh, when shading it. Uh, and it's particularly useful for when you're doing the inner faces of arms and legs, which, by the way, do make sure that you've done those because I myself have occasionally forgotten them. There's something you cannot miss on your skin because y it will show when the skin is moving. When the player is moving, you will see the inner faces of those arms. And if those are empty or if they're just uh, the skin tone, they look terrible. So do whatever you can to remember to do the inner faces of the arms and legs. It is really important. And the same thing goes for the top and bottom of the torso. People often forget about those as well. Uh, even the sides of the torso uh, you might sometimes forget about. So uh, just watch out for those. They are important. You do want to make sure those are uh, done. Uh, same with the tops of the legs as well. Uh, all of those will actually show anytime your player isn't just standing. So that's now the entire left column covered. I guess you do have this reset skin button there, but I don't really think I need to explain what that does. You know, it just refreshes the page and gets rid of whatever you've drawn on here. Uh, by the way, do be careful uh, if you want to use that. Make sure that whatever you have before, you download it to your computer first or you upload it to Skindex. People do that sometimes as well. You sometimes see skins on there that have WIP in the title and there's a reason for that. But yeah, make sure you have your skin saved before you go and reset the editor. So now let's take a look at the features we have on the right. Uh, on the top right we have the color selector. So there are two different ways to pick colors on Skindex. You can either pick them manually using this color picker tool right here. Uh, there's like a wheel here and then you can select different shades of that hue there in this square. Or you have the option to just uh, input any hex value manually uh, down below and that will pick uh, a precise hex value. So I guess that's just a random color I picked. It's sort of a brick red color. So for a lot of people who tend to pick their colors manually and aren't really precise in the colors they pick, uh, this is really all you're going to need. But if you want to use a different color system like HSL or HSV, you will have to open a converter in another tab uh, to convert those values into hex. Uh, that's probably not going to be a big deal if you're on a PC and especially if you have multiple monitors. But if you're using a phone or a tablet and it's kind of cumbersome to switch between tabs, then that might be a little bit of a bigger consideration. So keep that in mind. Moving below that, we have uh, the tools that I already explained, really. Uh, we have, you know, the option to show or hide the body or outer layer. As you can see, when it is grey, that means the layer is not visible. And when it is orange, that means the layer is visible. On the Skindex editor, you only ever toggle on and off the entire layer, so you don't do it part by part. Uh, what that means also is when you toggle on and off individual body parts, you will toggle the entirety of that part. So as you can see, I just select this arm here and the arm disappears from both layers and I can work on each layer on the side of the torso individually. So I can get rid of the outer layer and work on the side of the torso there. And I can turn the outer layer back on and then continue drawing more. Very useful and, uh, to be honest, a vital tool for, uh, you know, doing detail and uh, making sure that, as I mentioned before, you get the inner sides of the arms, inner sides of the legs, top side of the legs, uh, top and bottom of the torso, and to some extent, the sides of the torso. I think, in general, people do remember to do those. But you never know. You should always double check because I have forgotten those in the past and oh my god, I was so disappointed in myself afterwards. You do not want to be like me in that situation. Make sure you've done those surfaces. 
I guess I should finish up by once again explaining these tools on the bottom right. So we have the option to upload the skin directly to Skindex. Uh, here in the middle we have the option to download it to your computer or to your mobile device. And then uh, to the right of that you have the opposite which uh, means you can import a file from your computer or from your phone. And uh, both of those tools uh, are going to be very useful if you're working on a reshade or if you're doing like a multi-stage skin. Or if you're doing it, even if you're just doing a skin that takes a long time, it might be a good idea to download that skin every so often, just in case the editor refreshes and you lose all your hard work. Again, just like the inner faces, you do not want to be in that position. And then finally above that we have the option to switch between the two different player models. But as I've said before, unless you're making a very muscular man, the Alex or Slim or 3 pixel arm model will almost certainly look a lot better. This goes for male skins, female skins and skins of all different ages. And with that we've covered basically everything there is to know about the skin Dex editor. It may seem simple at first, but you'd be surprised how advanced its features can get. Whether you're brand new or you've been skinning for years, I hope you got something useful out of this. If you did, I would really appreciate if you liked the video and subscribed to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again another time.